keep saying I'll start on Monday and Monday never comes. I go on a holiday soon and I really want a bigger bum and a smaller waist. Can you help? Look, if you want to come Jim, come. make sure you put the work in. Some want to get fit, some want to get slim. Some want to start competing, but enough of them just can't stop cheating. When their belly is full, they're still eating. Me, I practice what I'm teaching. They don't live what they're... Pre- What's up, Fit Fam? This is Giovanni of Geo's Logic, your host of Fitness Junkies. I hope this show meets you in good health and spirits, and if not, I hope it inspires you to do something about it. I'm so crazy excited right now. I'm sitting next to one of the best bodies in the world. Ashlyn, how are you? Hi, I am amazing. Thank you for having me, by the way. I'm very excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. So, before we get into the Olympia and your amazing run there, um, everyone that sits in that chair has a fitness journey. What's yours? How did you get from wherever you were to the Olympia? Ooh, um, it's, <laughs> long story short. It's, yeah, long story short. It's actually been a very long journey, um, to say the least. This being, you know, my fifth Olympia. So it's definitely been a long journey. Never in a million years thought I would be here and sitting here talking about, you know, this. Olympia, right. At the Olympia, right. <laughs> um, but, you know, my dad, it's funny, my dad, like, loves Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I grew up with him, like, lifting weights and doing all that. I never cared about it. He would try to train me, do all that stuff. I was like, nah, I don't care about right. it, you know? Right. Um, what was your thing? When you were a kid. I was a cheerleader, dancer, okay. like gymnast, you okay. know, I pretty much played every sport. I wasn't good at every sport. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite thing was honestly like cheer or dance. Like I okay. liked it. Okay. Um, but once I graduated high school, I was just like, I want to do something different, but I still am very competitive. So I was like, what could I do that's like still competitive, but active, you know, to keep my health like in a good spot. Um, because for a while, like I didn't have any like guidance with health, mm. um, but I knew it was important, right? Like I just didn't really understand it. Um, so I actually started studying to be a dietitian. Um, I was in dental school, or I was about to be in dental school. I was taking all my prereqs so I could apply to dental school. So that's like what I was doing when I kind of stumbled upon bodybuilding. Um, and then I kind of was like, well, I don't want to do dental anymore. I want to do. I want to be a dietitian. I want to learn more about this and like more about health and. Um, nutrition and you know how to take care of your body and stuff so that was like what like where I started and then when I discovered bodybuilding obviously like I think it was more of the competitiveness that drew that drew me to Uh, that Um, so I kind of wanted to have best of both like I wanted to have something that was going to give me like health and you know keep me in a good spot you know making good choices all that stuff with like my food and Mm -hmm. alcohol like you know I was a big drinker when I was young Mm -hmm. um I partied all the time with my friends you know I didn't really feel like my people that I was surrounding myself with were like good people so I wanted to break out of that and I wanted I basically kind of isolated myself for a while um but I learned a lot about myself in that time um and I just studied to be a dietitian. I didn't actually end up going to school for it. I just took online stuff, mm-hmm. uh, but I learned a lot. So it really like made me want to um, go to the gym more and like start learning how to lift weights. So then when I started learning how to lift weights, um, Instagram was becoming popular and people were talking about bodybuilding more. And like, it was more of like, you could see like women, like um, Amanda Tona, like stuff like that. Like I would follow her and I was, she was a big inspiration to me. Um, because where I came from, like women don't have muscle, right. like they cardio bunny, like salads, like that's just what they do, you know? Right. Um, Is it Florida? You, you um, Texas. Texas. Okay. Yeah. So I just wasn't introduced to like the bodybuilding community in Texas. So like all of my friends, they didn't do any of that stuff. Right, right. I was the only person I knew that worked out. Right. So I was just like, okay, well, let me follow these girls on here. And like when I figured out what, you know, a show was, I was actually waitressing. Uh-huh. Um, I was waitressing and a guy had sat at my table and he was like, you're in great shape. And this is when I just started like dieting and working out a little bit, but mm-hmm. I, I had no clue what I was doing. Right. He's like, you're in great shape. Um, he's like, do you know Trish Warren and Branch Warren? And I was like, yeah, I know who they are. I'm like, you know, they're really big into the um, Texas bodybuilding community. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and he was like, well, I'm really good friends with them. I would love to introduce you to Trish. Like, she should help you do a show. And I'm like, oh, she would never take me on. Right. You know, I'm like, right. she's a professional. Like, she's an IFBB <laughs> pro. I'm like, I'm nobody. Like, right. she's not going to take me on, you know? And he's like, look, I'll put in a good word for you. Like, you know, just meet up with her, see if you guys get a vibe. And I really think you should do a show. And I'm like, okay, I don't know anything about it, but you know, I'll talk to her. Um, so she actually reached back out to me, mm -hmm. like within the same day. Mm -hmm. I met up with her, we decided to do a show. She prepped me for my first show. I prepped for five weeks. That's how little I was. Wow. I only needed five weeks of eating pretty much eggs and tilapia and, you know, <laughs> right. like nothing the crazy. <laughs> she just gave me a little diet. She trained me in person like once or twice a week. She taught me how to pose. Um, I found a suit. It was lime green. It was, it was free. <laughs> it was free, so right. I took it. Right. Um, so there's a lot of things, I think, that led me to that. But I think it was like steps, right? Yeah. Like I, I found one thing that I really liked that led me to something else. Right. And then that one thing led me to another thing. But that guy that sat at my table, um, I just think that that was really what a had sign. sparked it. Yeah. You know, because he yeah. introduced me to people I probably would have never gotten the chance to right. be introduced to, you know? Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. So right. I did my first show and fell in love with it and you know I was way too small I didn't get top five right um but bikini still bikini yeah. yeah yeah I was way too small so bikini only came around what like 15 years ago how many years ago was that like when bikini just started um I don't know. it's not it's not it was like before that it was I think you I think, couldn't I think it was 2000 Nine, I mean, 2010, 2011. I think that's when Bikini right. started. Right. So when was your first show? 2015. Okay. Yeah. So um, it had already progressed a bit. Yeah. Um, and uh, so you you had some good points in there. You were living in this lifestyle, drinking and partying. Yeah. And really sounding like you wanted something else yeah and I think a lot of people find the bodybuilding lifestyle even if you're not competing yeah is a great way to pull yourself out of those not necessarily traps but um, non like healthy ways habits I mean yeah. people create habits you know whether they're good or bad habits and that's could be, you know, a work environment. It could be, you know, a family environment. It could be a relationship yeah. environment. Yeah. Um, so I think that the environment that I was in really was just easy for me to continue with those bad habits and the people that I was surrounding myself with, which don't get me wrong, they weren't like bad people. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. It's just, I wanted to have different aspirations and goals and like things that I look forward to. But I was like, well, the only way that's gonna happen is if I change the environment that I'm in because I can't do that while I'm in this environment. And I think like things just started clicking for me with like what I actually wanted. And I wanted to do something that was gonna like challenge me and something that, you know, I missed, I missed the competitive like lifestyle I used to have. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what am I missing from back then to now? Right. And it was, that was a huge component right. of like something that I loved. Like I loved going to practice every day. You know, mm -hmm. I had, there was like a regimen that I right. had to follow. The showtime, the, the game, I would go whatever. and prepare for like a cheerleading event, you right. know, and we would get on the bus together and we would go did and like. Did you actually do the cheer shows? Yeah, I oh, was a competitive okay. cheerleader. Oh, wow. I did it competitively for okay. years. Okay, wow. So we would go and, you know, you she would. Like thrown up in the Yep, I was a flyer. Oh, God. Yeah, I would do flips. <laughs> I would do everything. It was wow. crazy, yeah. So. I think because I started low with that and I got progressively better at it, I'm somebody that I'm not naturally good at a lot of things. Like I have to like really try like to do certain things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of that for me is more mental. Mm -hmm. Like my mental part of me kind of gets in my way. Like I get nervous mm -hmm. that what if I fail? What if I look stupid? Mm -hmm. Like all those things, yeah. like normal people. Right. Um, I'm never like, like I'm always somebody that wants to do it, but then 
when it's happening, I'm like, oh, no, wait, I'm nervous now, you know? Right, right. So this is, bodybuilding has actually, like, really, really pushed me outside my comfort zone. Yeah. Like, I am, <laughs> I am not somebody that would be like, oh, yeah, I would love to do an interview with you and, like, come talk. Like, normally I'm like, oh, no. Like, I'm very not like Reserved. that. Yes. Right. Um, but I would say I'm a huge, like, introvert. But this sport has actually made me way more of an extrovert. Like, I actually enjoy doing stuff like this now. I've, yeah. I've even thought about doing, like, motivational speeches and mm. stuff like that. Like, mm. just, it, you know, I think also just life. You go through life and it teaches you a lot. And you yeah. want to, you know, help other people. Yeah. Coaching, my job, same thing. It's really brought me to, like, branch out to more and more and more people. Right. Make, make more connections, all that stuff. So right. bodybuilding, I mean, is is changed me a hundred percent with yeah. just my even my personality which is crazy yeah so great great transition here to the stage um how do you an introvert get to <laughs> the olympia stage which is the super bowl of bodybuilding and what type of level of confidence you have to have you have to develop to walk out there and be judged in a tiny micro bikini amongst these gorgeous women that are just like you. Like they're like I always when I watch the show, I always go, how can the judges separate these girls? It's they're hard. So perfect. I all know. Of them. It's so hard. Um, I don't know how they do it. I don't want to be a judge. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Um, but I think the confidence thing. <laughs> it's hard because, especially. I, I feel like I look at myself still as like nobody. Not like good I'm, enough. and it's imposter, not. Even, imposter yeah, imposter syndrome. syndrome. Yep. I think, you know, I think it's just one of those things where I still go into every single show like I gotta prove, I gotta prove something. Like I'm not, right. I'm not there yet. Like right. until I'm in, you know, those top five spots. Like I, I'm like. I don't like saying like I ain't shit, but I mean like that's how I feel sometimes. Right, like right. I gotta keep working, I gotta keep showing up. Um, and you know, people are like, "Well, you're in the mix, like you're you're in the mix of those top people." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I'm I'm not there yet. Like mm. I, I I'm just very hard on myself." Mm. So I think like the confidence thing, I still work on mm. a lot. Thank you, Andre, yeah, and you have to. Yeah. Um, there's some people I feel like they just got it, and whether it's fake or whether it's real only they know that right, you know right, like they right. can portray being really confident but right. maybe on the inside right. you don't know how they're really feeling right. um, I have to really 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 put it on mm. like I have to really try um, because I do get very 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 like shy right. very shy like I think I'm good at acting like I'm not right. but on the inside it, I'm sitting here like oh my god this is so hard for me right now are you like when you're about to go on stage are you like crazy nervous are you like my feet sweat like actually in those shoes mm -hmm. oh my god <laughs> yeah and i'm it, you know what's crazy is that it's when i'm not even like close yet to go i'm fine and then i notice it every time i'm standing on those stairs waiting to go up there right I'm just like, why are my feet all of a sudden oh, sweating God. right now? Oh, I swear. At least it's your feet, I guess. So I am nervous. Right. I don't feel it here. I feel it in my feet. I'm like, no. okay, that's that means I'm nervous. Right, right. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. But I'm calm when I'm standing there as far as like my mental headspace. Oh, <laughs> okay. So um. I feel calm. I feel good. I'm like, Ashley, you know what you're doing, you know? Uh, but my feet say otherwise. They're like, no, you're nervous right now. Like, it's it's one of those battles, right? Like, I tell myself all the time, you're good. Just go have fun. Right. Don't worry about nothing else. You're right. the only one here. You're the only one on that stage. There's nobody else in the crowd. Right. It's just you today. Right. And I feel like that, you know, I have to tell myself that I'm, I'm getting better at it. Right. Like, but there's some days where I go out there and I come on stage and I'm like, Oh my god, I was a nervous wreck. And there's sometimes that I just go out there and I'm like, damn, I'm just feeling right. it today. Like right. I'm feeling so good right. today. You gotta like bottle that that up and so you can sip on it. You know? It doesn't ever go away though. Like it yeah. doesn't. I mean, yeah. not for me. I'm I get nervous every time. It's like an excited nervous. Right. You know I what I mean? I feel like it's the same energy. You know, like nervousness and excitement 
are almost like in the same cup. Yeah. One is just fear and one is joy, kind of, but it's that same energy. Yeah. Um, so back to building that confidence and then as a coach, you have to teach that confidence. Yeah. Um, are there, is it like 10,000 hours or like, like how do you get so confident? Is it just reps with your routine and reps, reps, reps? Yeah, I mean, 100%. So it's obviously when you know your craft, you feel more confident in what you're doing. Right. So you can speak on it, you can talk about it. If you ask me a question, I'm gonna be able to answer. So I feel like that it's just like homework. You study it, you know what you're talking about. That way, like, oh, I know this. Like, I know how to pose. Does that mean that I'm gonna be the most graceful this day? I don't know, maybe my, my I miss a step or something. But that's, because your feet are wet. And I think that's <laughs> what gets in my head is the fact that anything human nature can right. just happen at any moment, no right. matter how much you study. Right. No matter how many times I do the routine. Right. I cannot pick up my foot on, on accident and trip. I mean, right. we're in heels. Right. Anything can happen. Right. So I think that's more where I get my head. Like I have to just tell myself, like, just pay attention to what you're doing. Right. You know, just just take your time, slow down. Um, when you're not rushing, you're not gonna, you know, you, if you make a little mistake, you can fix it a little right. bit easier. Right. So take your time, slow down. Um, so that's typically the talks I have with myself before I'm going on stage. Breathe, take Breathe. your time, <laughs> slow down. Don't let, you know, the outside noise of everything that's going on, the commentators, all this stuff, like, just shut that out. Just breathe, take your time, smile. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you really just sit there and bring it all together, relax, that's when I notice that I'm my calmest and my most confident. Mm. And that just gets a little bit easier over time. Mm. So like the more I compete, the better I feel, the more stages I've been on, the more times I've been in front of the same judges. Right. It's familiarity now, mm -hmm. like the more I'm doing it, the more comfortable it feels. So I'm always comfortable. The confidence comes with comfortability. Mm. So the more comfortable I am, the more confident I'm gonna feel. And I also think that that's truly like every every show is gonna be different. There's some there's some shows I'm just like, man, I feel on fire today. Like right. today is just my day. Right. And there's some shows that I'm just like, today just doesn't feel like my day, but I'm gonna still turn it on. Right. So that's something you gotta tell yourself. Mm. And. Um, I just think because I've just competed a million times, like the more you do it, the more you practice your craft, the easier it's going to be, the better right. you're going to feel. Right. So that's just time. Right. Honestly, experience right. and time. Right. Um, so I haven't followed you for too long, probably like a year and a half or so on Instagram, but I noticed a huge change in your glutes and your overall conditioning. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess they were saying, they're gonna probably say you were too conditioned. What were the feedbacks that, cause you were in it. Mm -hmm. I, when, when, you, when you came in, you were the second call back at the uh, expo, mm -hmm. second call out. And then I was like, oh shit, she's in the game. Yeah, they. And then, ah. what'd they say? Like, cause you look great. They, ah, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Usually at prejudging, they always want me a little bit fuller. And then when I show up at finals, they're like, this is the fullness. But it's just difficult, you know, with my body sometimes because, I mean, that's hours of, then I've got to wake up even earlier to start eating. So I think that's something that we're learning um, because my body is so weird. Um, when I've been dieting for a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. So usually my very first show, I've been dieting. 12 weeks maybe, so mm -hmm. that's like nothing. Mm -hmm. um, my fullness, I you could give me like a cup of rice and I'm gonna get full pretty quick. When I've been dieting even longer, so then we go into the Olympia and it's just been like a long time. Yeah. It takes me a little bit longer to get that pop, to get that fullness, you know, going. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like we needed to wake up a little bit earlier, start eating a little bit earlier to let the food kind of settle. Mm -hmm. um, because then they saw me at finals, they were like, this is the perfect fullness. So they just wanted me a little bit fuller in the morning. Um, and that played a part in the evening show that you 
because you weren't they had already i i'm pretty sure they had already judged where you know the girls where gonna the girls were going to be um i don't think that they changed anything you know when they brought us back out for finals i think that they had already made their decision i could be wrong that's just what i would assume because they didn't really move us around or anything they just kind of right. put us in the same spots and the, they were like okay hmm. so i was just under the impression they didn't make any changes you know yeah. they decided what they had decided and then they confirmed it basically at finals right. so even though i was fuller at finals even though i brought you know more fullness and what they wanted to see out of me i mm. think that they had Tiny. already made their decision right you God. know what i mean um so so my next question is my follow-up question especially considering how hard you are in yourself how do you deal with losing or how do you deal with not placing where you thought you should have could have would have yeah um i mean as anyone you know that works so hard for something and like of course it's it's disappointing you know to not get something that you work really hard for but at the same time um you know i know that it's out of our control mm. and we can't beat up something you know for, for myself at least I can't sit here and like beat myself up or you know shoulda woulda coulda like, right. like you it's said a like great accomplishment you, and you kind of can't belittle it either that's what I'm saying yeah. so I was telling I was talking to my coach and I was like you know who's your coach? Cash okay, yeah. yeah so Neil Cash um I told him I was like I don't even like to sound like say that I'm even a little bit upset because right. I'm, I'm not like right. in all reality I'm not right um, I am so proud we moved up two spots this is the best placing that I've ever gotten we're one spot away from the top five mm -hmm. um, sixth place is an incredible honor like honestly I am still just shocked that I'm sixth place in the world right. um, it that's why I don't like aiming for anything and I tell my clients this too I'm like Every show just go in with zero expectations. Every single show, because when you put an expectation on something, you automatically get disappointed if you don't get that, even yeah. though what you got was still amazing. Right, it's such a good, such a good thing. So it's like, I don't like putting that because then it, it automatically seems like six isn't good enough and that's not true. Right. Like, right. you know, like last year when I got eighth place, um, Amy Delgado had gotten sixth place, and I was like, that's such a huge accomplishment. Like, I would love to be where she's at. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, Amy's been on the show, yeah. Yeah, she's, so it's like, that's, yeah. that's a huge accomplishment. I would love yeah. that. And then this year, because I had really, really, really wanted to get into the top five, mm -hmm. you know, now six almost seems like it wasn't good enough, but, it, mm -hmm. that, but that's what I wanted right. last year. Right. You know, so right. that's, the, that's what, I, what I mean. I just don't want to ever put something like... I have to get this certain thing because then if I don't get it, then you you feel disappointed when you shouldn't be. Right. And I, and right. I, and I, overall, like I'm not disappointed. Right. So, anyways, I definitely am not disappointed whatsoever. Um, but I just don't love you know putting a number on things and an expectation on things because anything could happen. Literally anything. Right. I mean, you're dealing with bodies. You're dealing with people that you know judge, judging panel that's a big judging panel. It's not a normal pro judging panel. It's, you know, there's a lot of different opinions, a lot of different eyes, you know, yeah. a lot of people wanting a lot of to angles. Like, <clears throat> and I was on the end, you know, at the very initial comparison. Yeah. So having to angle for them and stuff, just making sure that, you know, they can see me and stuff is never. And interesting, the winner, how tall she was, mm -hmm. it's usually kind of, I mean, Ashley came in second. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, is she going to win again? <laughs> I, I, I was wondering too. Like, I didn't know who they were going to pick. Right. But that's tall usually. I mean, I don't know. Like, Jennifer is not that tall. She's no, she's like 5'5", five, 5'4". Five, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's going that high. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. And, like, I feel like she was maybe a little bit out of the normal of, of what bikini is coming but i guess you never know what the judge is looking for today exactly and that's the thing you never know and yeah. you know depending on where they want to take the division from year to year to year yeah. what changes they want to make yeah. how they want the you know division to evolve mm -hmm. um yeah that's something you can't put you know 
a f your finger on every single time. It's it's not up to us. It's up to them. And yeah. usually we're not going to know until the outcome is what it is. Right. So for me, like, just to make sure that I always keep my head in a good place and um, you know, I'm not too like hard on myself because I am like pretty hard on myself, but mm -hmm. I always am just like, this isn't up to us. Like we just have to bring, you know, the best that we can for that day and that moment and mm -hmm. whatever they see out of me, like for that day, like then we need to adjust. Right. So it's like when we saw, I mean, I loved the fullness that we brought for um, prejudging, <clears throat> but then I saw the difference from prejudging to finals, mm -hmm. the fullness, and they want, like, the fullness they're looking for is, like, a lot more than what, I guess, we thought. Mm. Like, we, like, like, we're both like, dang, we're full, you know? Right. But then they're like, oh, you mean full, full, like, full, 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 like, <laughs> literally, like, I saw my glutes at finals, I was like, oh my gosh, like, that's really full. <laughs> so, got back. Yeah, I was like, that's really full, so, I don't know. <laughs> It's difficult, I think, um, yeah. to nail the perfect, like what they're looking to see Got out it. of you each yeah. time. 100%. Because what we see is full, they want more of. So we're just like, okay, right. if that's what you want, then we just got to make sure we're getting nailing that each time, yeah. you know? Um, well, that's a perfect transition. I want to, again, I, I noticed one of the big improvements was the fullness of your glutes yeah. com compared to last time, or really maybe last year, um, maybe just show us maybe one of your like supersets that you love to do in the gym um, and how you think that might have changed yeah. your glutes. I know there's a lot. You probably do so much volume. Yeah. Um, but just talk about, like we'll, we'll find a machine or whatever and then just cool. go. Okay, so you have a superset for the girls that are trying to develop the glutes. Yes, so you wanna be able to hit all parts of the glute. So in order to create the roundness, the fullness, the projection of the glute, you have to be able to target every single area, which is gonna be the lower glute. It's gonna be the upper, outer, so the medius, um, and then of course the middle glute. So you're gonna to wanna to literally target every single area for it to be coming out this way and coming out this way. You want that like heart shaped booty. So you gotta have the density of it and the density comes from, there's a few different ways you can target that. So hip thrust is gonna be great for lower and middle. Some people can feel it in their upper. I don't feel it in my upper, just saying. But I definitely feel it in my lower and in my middle. So we will do a superset. So any pointers or tips? Do you, do, you, so, do you put bands sometimes around your legs? Or? If you do do a band, really you're basically just going to exhaust um, the lower and the middle part of the glute. And then you can use the band to extend here while still keeping the position. Okay. So you would I'm basically sure you do both. <laughs> yeah, so you would basically do as many reps as you can here. Once you feel that is like exhausting, you can come here and then this is gonna fall. And then you'll have the band here and you are still in your position. So this is tight, your glutes are tight and you just open. So it's a very small movement and that is gonna target your upper and outer ah. glute. So this part is squeezed, but it's really just to engage this part when you're opening. So that's what you'll do. So you don't want to drop the glute. You want to keep it up here. And when this is, when you exhaust this muscle and do that, your upper outer glutes are on fire. Screaming. Yes. <laughs> so it's great to do. Um, we're doing a similar one, but on with weights instead of bands. Got it. So it's, it's similar. So, the way that the setup goes with the hip thrust is always going to be dependent on your height and your leg height, like your leg length. So because I'm short, I can't really fit into a lot of like, um, like um, hip thrust machines. Those are okay. This one's okay. 
Um, but the ones that are like, they like fold over. It's like an old school right. one. I can't really do those. If you're short, <laughs> those are like, no. So I typically will set up, but this is actually a really good hip thrust machine. So I always keep my feet like pretty like a neutral, like it's not wide and it's not close. It's going to be like that neutral stance. Um, and then you're going to want to have this like lower on your hip bone. So it's going to be when you press up, you want to extend, but not overextend. So it's going to be, you're down here. You're gonna push up with keeping your spine neutral and use just the glutes to push. Ow. So that's how you're, you're not using your lower back. Use the glutes and the hamstring tie in. Come up, squeeze, hold, down. Same thing. You should be squeezing at the bottom all the way to the top. <laughs> and then you can release, squeeze, hold. Keep, some people keep their chin tucked because it helps them be able to control the spine. You don't have to. But. How important is that mind to muscle with the isometric squeeze? extremely <laughs> it is the most important part if you are not feeling that squeeze at the very bottom and holding it and then squeezing at the very top you're probably targeting way more of your legs than you are the actual glute. so start light if you can't feel that squeeze right go no weight if you got to do a band if you got to do no weight, you want to be able to know how to contract that muscle or it's going to, your, your legs are going to take over every time. Huh. Okay. So, so now the second part is. So then after you exhaust your cheeks. <laughs> okay. So these actually, this specifically, this exercise specifically, um, my coach actually had me start putting this in after Texas because we got the feedback about the upper glutes. They just wanted a touch more of the upper glutes because my lower body, my legs have grown so much uh, from last year that they wanted the upper glute to come up a little bit more just to match. Um, so he actually put this exercise in which, so this is the normal, the normal, which I'm short, so it's like <laughs> I have to scoot up. <laughs> but the normal one is just like here. So the one we did previously was the standing one that you sit back into. So this one, you're already sitting, you pull your glutes down into it, you do just your normal. Well, he wanted me to do the same exercise, but in a top hip thrust position. So when you're doing your hip thrust, you're here, you squeeze the glutes. You are doing the exact same movement, but you're holding it and you're using just the upper and outer to do the work. So you don't have to extend out all the way, just enough to where you're targeting this, this while keeping your glutes and everything back all in a straight line. So you're just using this, keeping everything flat. Wow. It's hard. <laughs> I never even knew that's what the whole thing was. It's hard not to dip. Yeah. Like it's hard to keep this and open at the same time. I bet. Because your body naturally wants to go like that. But you keep this here. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> it doesn't burns. take much but it's great yeah it does take much there's not a lot of weight on here uh very light it's a small it's it's kind of like working the rear delt it's a very small muscle you don't got to put a lot of weight on it um to target it so it's about keeping that tension so the more tension you can keep there the more you can target and, and really force blood into that specific muscle the more it's going to grow so 
this is a great exercise for upper outer glute. Um, you know, you can, you can do these by themselves. You can do it at the end of the workout when your glutes are exhausted. Um, and then you can do it in between, you know, hip thrust sets, things like that. So uh, my coach actually had me do it at the very end of the workout. So he has me start with these and end with these. So really targeting that, you know, upper outer glute. And it worked. Yeah, I mean, it did. They grew a little <laughs> bit, which is what we needed. Two, one. So just like how I was showing you about exhausting, um, you know, your muscle, your bigger muscles, that way the smaller muscles can actually start doing the work. Um, so we do that with the hip thrust. So then we're gonna come over to, you can do any um, hip abduction machine, whether it's sitting or standing. Um, so this one will show you how to get into the position and then um, do this exercise, which you're gonna do directly after the hip thrust. So as soon as you're done with the hip thrust, come over to one of these machines and then you're going to, um, you'll see, you'll, you'll feel how pumped your glutes are. You're gonna wanna sit into that glute and once you sit into that glute, you're gonna be using just your upper, upper and outer glute muscles to do most of the work because your lower and middle glute should be like toast. Exhausted. Yeah. So you'll sit into it, hold it back. And again, you're keeping tension the whole time. <laughs> it's already getting hard. So Ashlyn, we're here at Strength Culture in the posing room, and you're gonna give us some insider information on what it takes to be an Olympia bikini pro and what all the things that are going on on the stage and what do you think are the most important parts of your stage performance? So the judges are obviously going to be looking at the confidence. That's going to be like one of the number one things. Um, when they see each competitor come out on stage, you know, everyone looks amazing. So um, in order to bring out your personality, in order to bring out your confidence, you know, practicing posing is going to be like the number one key for every, every athlete, um, especially when you're a newer competitor, because there's so much going on, um, you know, you have to think about, um, you know, just as, something as small as just your breathing, right? Like breathing on stage, making sure you're keeping your core tight the whole time. Little bitty things are going to pop in your head constantly. What type of floor is it going to be that we're walking on? Um, you know, little bitty things are going to start circulating. So you want to be able to know exactly what you're doing without having to think about it. Do you get a practice walk at all when you get to the stage or you don't know? No, there's no practice walk. Um, oh, God. Yeah. So I will say sometimes um, at the check-ins, you do get to see the stage. So it depends on what show you're doing, but okay. most of the time the check-in like athlete meeting uh -huh. is gonna be like located somewhere where the stage is at, like okay. in the venue. Okay. Um, so you can at least see what the flooring looks like. Some of the promoters will kind of let you um, look um, and get on top of the stage and kind of like feel it. Right. Um, so I have been to a pl plenty of shows where they have that, which is nice. Right. Um, but no, there's no practice walk right so i always recommend trying to walk um and um in your heels and just doing all of your poses on many different floors oh. you know because you never know what type of floor i mean i've posed on pretty much every floor i've posed on you know a rough carpet a smooth carpet um i've posed on hardwood floor i've posed on like the slick hardwood floor like this doesn't have like that slick coating uh -huh. that's on there um, like you would see like in a basketball court or something right, like that. Right. So they have all different, I mean, I've posed in, you know, an auditorium before, um, where it's, you know, a little bit more rusty up there. I've posed on, um, it's basically where they make the stage. So it's almost like that, um, that black, like 
it's not very sturdy. It's kind of like wobbly just a little bit. It's like oh, that God. black flooring that they kind of piece together. Oh, like a There's riser. tape on the floor sometimes. You know oh, what wow. I mean? Right, right. Um, so there's so many factors that go with just the stage alone that you have to think about. <laughs> um, you know, at the Olympia, it was carpet. It typically is carpet. Um, it's a very actually, it's actually pretty easy to pose on. But if you've never posed on carpet before, you're probably going to get tripped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, practicing on all different types of floor is going to be your best to be able to feel comfortable um, on, you know, certain floorings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's hard. <laughs> Posing <laughs> is very difficult um, because you want to look as natural and confident and effortless, I would say. You want to make it look effortless while feeling and twisting and clenching your core and doing all these things that you're supposed to be doing, but making that look effortless. Right, So, right. So it's difficult. Right, it's like, it's, it seems really unfair for you, bikini and wellness competitors, because you have to bring in your best body, your leanness, the appropriate amount of muscle size, and then you've got to be girly and glammy and not fall yeah. on those things. Yeah. And, you know, I do always say this, too, especially to my new athletes that I'm coaching. You know, it's okay to trip a little bit or miss a step or kind of fall over just a little bit. Just fix yourself immediately. So as soon as you do that, fix yourself, get right back into your pose, keep that big smile on your face. Like the judges know that we're in heels. They know that it's difficult to walk in, you know, do the poses and do all that. Um, pros, even top Olympians, you know, mess up a few times here and there. Like it's bound to happen, um, especially depending on like what floor you're on. Mm -hmm. So the judges take that into consideration. You know, it's not like, oh, you know, I mean, knock, knock that off. Like she slipped. <laughs> yeah. It's very common no matter what level you're at. Okay. Um, but I think what they look at the most is how you pick back up, you know, what your confidence is, is something that they, that that's what draws their eye the most. It's going to be the confidence. So if you walk out there and maybe you, you don't have the best physique, but man, they can't take their eyes off of you because your posing is just on point and everything is just like that confidence is radiating out of you. Um, they really do notice that and they take that into consideration because they want people that are practicing their posing, you know, getting up there and stuff. So they would much rather have somebody that is looking, you know, looking like a professional, acting like a professional, being confident like a professional, um, you know, no matter what stage you're on, whether it's an amateur stage, you know, a pro stage, the Olympia stage, you know, they're looking at that out of everybody. So, so how do you you're there's nervousness right as yeah. well and then if you do slip or miss a routine movement then your mind goes crazy mm -hmm. do you have any tricks to like you know i know you know sometimes people say about you know audiences you know pretend everyone in the audience is naked, na naked or, something. or something like do you have any mind games you play with yourself like do you look at the judges like you want to date them or you, know, <laughs> you love with them? Like, what is your trick? I think everybody has their personality, right? So if you have a very cute and flirty personality, be that on stage. If you are a very shy person, you're going to have to figure out what personality is going to make you comfortable. There's some people that they just can't pull off that like sex appeal, that like sexy look. It just looks awkward uh -huh. um, because that's not their personality. Right. Um, so I think that if you can figure out what is going to fit your personality best and bring that to life on stage, um, you know, and some people, if they are really shy, but, you know, the inner of them is like, like maybe they have a favorite like artist or something that they're like, man, that girl is like a bad bitch, right? Like, uh -huh. she, like you really want to like look up to her and you want to be like, yes, that girl's cool. Maybe have that persona in your head and then be able to turn that on almost like a character on stage. Right. So, 
you know, you may not be that all the time, but if you have a character that, you know, can bring that part out of you when you're mm. on stage, I always like to think of like, you know, what is going to make me feel like sexy or beautiful or whatever the case is. And, you know, some people are just, they want to be elegant. They just want to look elegant on stage right. and they just want to look poised and right. um, they don't care about the sex appeal or any of that. And that's totally fine too. If that's not your personality and you want to go more towards like an elegant vibe, a more, um, you know, a little bit more sophisticated look, then you can do that as well instead of going more towards like the sex appeal. So there's a lot of different... Um, different versions um, you can do. Some people are just like flirty and cute and they just smile the whole time. Like mm -hmm. it's just something they, it's easy for them. They feel like they can get into their zone that way. Um, that's what I used to do. So like when I first started, I really didn't know what I was. Like I didn't know how to find that groove when I was getting on stage. So. I just was smiley and happy. And then I started realizing I'm smiling way too big. Like, I'm like, I'm happy to be here, but I need to tone down my facial expressions because mm -hmm. I think facial expressions are very important on stage. Um, and they should be subtle, but they should, you know, go with your look. And I think that, you know, as I started to figure out what my look was, um, you know, I started toning down my facial expressions a little bit more and I would practice those whenever I would pose at home. So I would fr practice like my facial expressions. I would put on music that would get me like hyped up or like in a zone. And then I would practice those facial expressions, like um, just videoing myself and rewatching it and then figuring out kind of what I liked to see out of myself and what right. made me feel the most confident and comfortable on stage. Right. And then let's talk about your body and like the things that you have to think about, like your hair flip and your arms and like, what are some of the like things that you think like Olympians do that maybe other people don't? Is it the arm movement? Is it the, the back pose? Is it the butt up pose? What is? <laughs> I think that everybody, um, as they get into it, you have like a signature move um, that I think just comes naturally. To be honest, okay. um, I I would say I have a signature move. Um, and it's, it's where when I'm in my back pose, I do a little sway to bring my feet in and I never did that intentionally. It just happened as I was learning how to pose. Uh -huh. Um, and I got more fluid and more better at it over time. Um, and now girls see that and they, you know, copy that movement. They like the movement. Right. And I used to do the same thing. I would take people's um, routines. I would put it into my own routine and I would kind of copy it. And then my own stuff kind of just came to life um, over time, practicing and practicing. And sometimes I would do things on accident and then I would be watching myself and I was like, oh, I really like that. How did I do that? And I would study it and then I would perfect it. Right. So it was a lot of my posing is by accident um, and just learning how to do certain things um, based off of just like practicing at my house. So back to the Olympia stage. Yeah. You did amazing this year. Thank you. You were up against girls that you got the legend, Ashley, the legend coming in second. Um, and is there anything on stage now that you've had a couple weeks to look back or I don't know if you've seen any of the video that you think, ah, or that's why she might have gotten a better score than I did. Did you, did you find anything that, um, or judges feedback or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, again, we practice right and we do things over and over and over. That sometimes they stick with us even when we're not trying. So like I used to always have a really wide stance in my back pose, and I sometimes revert to that on accident. So right. I did stand a little bit too wide um, for my pre-judging routine. I was a little bit too wide for what I know they want to see. Um, I've been told to bring my feet in a little bit closer. It's going to make my glutes pop a little bit more. It's going to make my overall back shot just look fuller and just more proportionate from top to bottom. And I noticed I didn't do that at the pre-judging. Mm. I did it at finals, which is great. Um, but again, you know, when you practice something for so long and it kind of gets embedded, when you make when you make adjustments, you have to really pay attention to what you're doing on stage. And it's fast. 
So even at the level I'm at getting sixth place in the world, like I still make mistakes. Right, right. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's like I, I know better than to do that. But when you're having all these things going on and you're just trying to be perfect, you know, you sometimes miss, miss you know, a step or something. Right. So when I stepped out, I stepped a little bit too far out. And instead of bringing this foot in to match, I just got it, just got in it right. and <laughs> stood there. So, and I can't, the thing is, is that I can't feel like this feels close. Even th this is wide uh -huh. for me. Okay. They want me like here. Oh. And so whenever I do this, it feels really close still. Right. So right. I'm having to really like, oh wait, I need to be in a little bit closer. <laughs> so it needs to be like, I don't have very like wide shoulders. My shoulders right. are a little bit more narrow right. for my frame. So um, I have to make sure my shoulders and feet are in line. Um, so yeah, I did mess up on that. I don't necessarily think that that was like a huge reason of my right. placing by right. any means. Right. Um, I do think that it could have made my glutes look a little bit more round, a little bit more full. Um, but I do know that they did want me to come in fuller. So we came in fuller for the night show. My feedback was to bring that fullness to the pre-judging and that's really what they wanted to see out of me. Um, it's really, really, really important to nail your pre-judging look because 99% of the time at pretty much every show, they already have their top three, top their people five. and their spots and their placings where they want them. So in order for them to really rejudge or change something like something dramatic or, or not dramatic, drastic has to happen. Like right. it has to be a pretty big difference for them to be like, Oh wow. Like, we're going to have to change this up at finals, you know? Right. But most of the time, you know, especially as professional athletes, like we're coming in good or better, you know, the same or better than we did at, at prejudging. So for them to rejudge is not very likely, oh, you know, okay. like they're pretty much going to sit what they had already set. Wow. Um, well, this has been great. Um, thank you so much for making the time after Olympia. I'm sure your head's still spinning. Um, it's a fun time. And uh, do you have any other last points that you can tell the women that are watching about the confidence in posing? Yes. Um, honestly, I think getting an in-person posing coach is going to be key if you're brand new to posing. Um, just because hands on to really like learn like if when I'm teaching posing I always tell my girls if they're new I'm like man I wish I could just come to the phone and just like move your hips <laughs> because you're not going to understand you know the wording and things like that um like if I were to be in this front pose and I was and I would say sit into your hip a little bit more do you mean sit into it like this or do you just mean twist here and sit you know there's a couple different ways that you can sit into the hip um, and it is going to depend on each person. It'll be different. So getting a posing coach in person is huge. I mean, you need to have a couple lessons, um, in person before you take online classes and then taking online classes will be so much easier for you. Um, but having a posing coach and having, you know, another set of eyes is going to be huge because there's little things that, you know, you're not going to be able to maybe pinpoint or see. And it's good to have a couple set of, you know, eyes to kind of see, um, you know, where your physique is at and what's going to be best for you. And honestly, just doing a show and getting feedback is going to be really important for you to continue to like level up. But posing is going to be your number one priority, especially if like you're a new competitor, because it's going to make or break, you know, where you get a placing it, you could be in the battle for overall, but if the girl is next to you and she has phenomenal posing and you know that you haven't practiced at all, you know, the person that has phenomenal posing is most likely going to be the winner. So, um, you know, take that seriously, get an in-person coach, then you can do online classes and just study um, people that have a physique. Don't always study people, it's a routine that you like, study people that have physique similar to yours because their routine is probably going to be something that's going to be a little bit better for you to hit because if I'm studying somebody that's like really, really, really tall, those poses may not look as good on me or those transitions may not look as good on me because I have a shorter frame. So taking into consideration like, you know, how somebody looks frame wise, tallness, 
muscularity wise, all of that is going to make a difference too in helping you learn how to pose. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs>